Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for joining me for another video. It has been a while, so I'm so happy to be back. If you don't watch my channel or you're new here, my partner and I have been living in New Zealand for the past year, which is insane. And I've done videos like this in the past. I did a first impressions, three month impressions and six months. So now that we've been here a full year, let's get into my impressions after being here for that long. The first thing on this list is friendliness. So this was something I was a little bit surprised about in the beginning in the first impressions video. I did mention that I did not find Kiwis or New Zealanders to be as friendly as I had anticipated. And a lot of people had said it was because we were in Auckland and we were in the city center and that was gonna change as we ventured out. So to follow up on that a year later, I have to say that it's pretty much stayed the same. Like there are always going to be outliers that are extremely friendly, friendly, that are extremely friendly, very outgoing, super willing to help you and chat with you and get to know you. And I think that's kind of true everywhere. I have actually noticed like a lot of passive aggressiveness here, a ton of road rage, and it can be kind of difficult to get to know the people who are actually from New Zealand. I find the friendliest people that we've met outside of a few locals are other travelers or expats. There's a lot of xenophobia and a little bit of racism here, which really sucks. I mean, you can't escape that no matter where you are living, but I would have thought New Zealand would have been a little bit better on this front. Maybe it's because we've been living on the South Island for the last seven months now, and the North Island is maybe a little bit more accepting. I know there are certain cities that are definitely way more open to meeting people and to getting to know people, but I have to say that the friendliness is still not as friendly as I was initially expecting before moving here a year ago. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that summer is a lot different than I had expected. It's actually very yellow. Like all of the grass has turned yellow because it's just so hot. The sun is so strong, but most days are extremely windy, at least where we are in Nelson. It's extremely windy, super dry. We are getting like a few days here and there that are quite rainy and cloudy and honestly like too chilly to be outside on the beach, which kind of sucks. We went through a heat wave that lasted like two two weeks, I wanna say. And I know that this weather year is different. It is El Nino this year. I think it's been La Nina for the last like three or four years. So this is probably not normal, but I was a bit surprised at how yellow everything got in the summer because all of the other seasons in New Zealand have been so green and so lush and just absolutely stunning. So I have to say that summer has actually been my least favorite season in New Zealand. I think my favorite season was either the fall or spring which makes sense. That's usually my favorite season back home or anywhere I travel to. It just is when like either things are growing, things are blooming or like leaves are changing color and it's so beautiful. And then the weather and the temperature is like a little bit more temperate. So I think that's why I have preferred those seasons here. Also winter was just fantastic. I mean, coming from Canada, of course it's gonna be amazing here. There were so many trees that were still green and a lot of the grass was still green. There were some trees that were dead and it sucked that the sun went down like super early around four or 4.30. But other than that, winter was definitely better than summer in my opinion. The one thing about summer, like I said, is that the days are longer and that is a huge bonus. So I really do understand why people wanna travel here in the summer. Summer in New Zealand is also the high tourist season and I was a bit surprised that it wasn't busier actually. There are parts of New Zealand that we've traveled in the winter, the spring and the summer that were quite busy, but they were no busier in the summer than they were on like the off seasons because we just did an entire road trip of the South Island in like eight days in the middle of summer. I'll link it here if you haven't checked that out, but it wasn't as busy as we were expecting. And there are certain parts on the South Island that there was like no one, like there was no one else, which is just mind boggling, honestly. You do see camper vans all the time. You see them cruise in, but honestly, like this is one of the least busy spots that I've ever traveled to. Even though there are, you know, places that have crowds, it's quite easy to get away from them. I think the busiest time that we've experienced here was over the Christmas break and it was locals traveling up to Nelson for their like two or three week holiday over Christmas and New Year's. And that was pretty wild. Like the traffic was insane. The campsite was like full to its brim. The campsite that's like across the street. The beach was absolutely packed. But other than that, it's been like very chill and the roads have been relatively quiet. 
So maybe that's a bonus if you're hesitating to booking travel in New Zealand in the summer because you think, oh, that's when everyone else goes. It's actually really not that bad. Let's talk about food. Food is one of my favorite topics. I absolutely love food. I love trying new things, but sometimes I can get in a rut and just have the same thing over and over again. We cook at home a lot, so we don't eat out all that much. But when we do, pies are pretty much our go-to and I am seriously really, really going to miss the New Zealand pies. Honestly, it kind of breaks my heart that I have to leave those pies behind because they are just, they're just amazing. Like. I can't even really describe my love for New Zealand pies. They are, they're everything. They're everything. And the same thing with Whitaker's chocolate. It's just the best. It's so good. The coconut blocks, the hokey pokey blocks, like, oh, it's really stolen my heart, you guys. These two things are probably some of my absolute favorite foods I've ever had, and I'm going to seriously miss them. So it really only makes sense to eat as many as possible before we leave, which I haven't been very good on. I haven't had a pie in like a couple weeks now, but I need to space it out. I feel like to really appreciate it, but at the same time, I need to have as many as possible. So yeah. The one thing that I have to criticize New Zealand on when it comes to food is pizza. And I'm sorry if you love the wood fired New Zealand pizza, but it's literally like this thin and I got nothing against like a thin crust, good pizza but specifically if you're gonna get pizza in New Zealand and take it home, like takeaway, it is not going to be very good. We've had, I think three different takeaways now and they were not good, like four out of 10, but we went back to those same places and had the same pizza in the restaurant and it was like way, way, way better. So the biggest tip I can give you is that if you're looking for quality pizza in New Zealand, don't order it and take it home, just eat it there because fresh out of that wood fire oven, it is like actually quite good. We have had some pizza here that is quite delicious, specifically Vinci's in Napier was like unbelievable. That is some of the best pizza I've ever had in my entire life. And a few little like food truck type places have had amazing pizza so you can find it, but that's my biggest recommendation. Don't get takeaway pizza here. Another tip on food is that it can be really difficult to find good American style mustard Caesar dressing and be very careful with which brands you buy of ketchup, like actual ketchup, not tomato paste, mayonnaise and ranch, because we have been burned a few times getting like Australian mayo, which tastes like plastic and certain mustards that are just like gritty and not in a good way, like not a Dijon mustard. I'm talking like an American yellow mustard. That has been so hard to find. I love mustard, like American mustard. I also like Dijon and other mustards, but just getting like a classic mustard has been very difficult. And a lot of the ranch dressings are super disgusting. We actually just bought one that was a little expensive and it was, I mean, it's not good at all. So there are certain brands that I can attest to that are 100% going to meet your expectation if you're from North America or you like North American style condiments. Maybe what I'll do is just put like a couple photos of them up here. So we have Heinz, Heinz ketchup, Heinz mayo. Those are both great. Mustard, it's tough. There is this pickle mustard, which I'll put here that I found. And that was amazing. If you like pickles, 100% that hit like every mustard wish and dream that I had. The next thing that I think New Zealand has been amazing for is the chilled out lifestyle. And this idea that like you don't have to keep up with the Joneses, you don't have to buy the most expensive vehicle that you can afford or like wear designer clothing or live in like some beautiful, super expensive penthouse and just be trying to look like you have money. Like I don't really think New Zealand gives a crap about how much money you have, it's more are you living like a fulfilling life? Are you actually spending time with your friends and family? Do you get to do the things you would like to do? Polar opposite of living in North America, not that every city is like this, and of course it matters what your friends group and your family are like, but I find New Zealand as a whole is a lot less judgmental on things like that, on material things. People just want to make the best of what they have and are less wasteful and less consumerist than I think North America is. That is something I'm really, really gonna miss about New Zealand is having that 
just feeling of like you can be yourself and you don't have to worry about people judging you for like not having the nicest clothing or driving the nicest car. I think that's something North America could definitely work on. The next thing I'm really gonna miss is the tipping culture or lack thereof because back home, Tipping is not only expected, but it's kind of the bare minimum now. You're gonna go out to a restaurant and get a meal. It's like 15 to 20%. I don't even think 15% is acceptable anymore. Like 20 to 25% tipping is normal. And then when you go to a restaurant here, like the price that's on the menu, that is the full price. You're not tipping on top of that. You're not paying tax on top of that. That's all in. So yes, when you go to a restaurant and look at that price, you're like, wow, that's kind of expensive. But when you think about it, to have all those fees already built in, absolutely amazing. And I'm sorely going to miss that. I do know that some of the tipping culture from North America is kind of like leaking into New Zealand. There's been a lot of vendors and restaurants that I've noticed are starting to put like the tip thing on the machine. And I just have to say, if you're from New Zealand, please resist this as much as you possibly can. Tipping culture absolutely sucks. And it's going to mean that these lower wage workers are gonna be relying on tips instead of their employer actually paying them a good wage or minimum wage. It's the worst, tipping culture is the worst back home and I'm really gonna miss that about New Zealand. That has been such a relief to not have that like awkward interaction at the end of a meal where you have to be like trying to guess what to tip somebody, it's horrible. Now let's talk about driving. So for anybody who is considering coming to New Zealand, whether it's to visit or live, I have to say if you're from driving on the right-hand side of the road, moving to the left-hand side of the road is not difficult. It takes maybe a day or two to get used to, especially if you're starting in a city, all you really have to do is follow traffic and remember to stay left. Another thing to note is that you cannot turn left on a red light here. Driving here is really easy as long as you're in like a city center or you're on major highways with multiple lanes. It gets a little sticky when you're going out into the countryside or you're on a highway that's only one lane. That's when, you know, it can get very windy and people can be driving up right on your butt and be like pressuring you almost to speed or pressuring you to pull over when it isn't safe. That is one of the criticisms for sure that I have about New Zealand is just the extremely unsafe driving that some people do here by excessively speeding around corners and a lot of tailgating. There's a ton of road rage. There's a ton of like revving engines. There's a lot of extremely loud vehicles. And if you're living on a busy street like we do, it can be very irritating when you hear honking, screaming, swearing all day long, engines revving, like motorcycles just blaring to the point where you feel like your eardrums are going to explode. It is that loud. Summer has been the worst for that. There's just been a lot more people out and about on their bikes and driving with, I don't know, extreme rage. I don't know what that is, but Overall though, most people drive safely. Most people don't tailgate or speed excessively. I will reiterate this because it is super important. If you are being tailgated and someone is driving very aggressively behind you, just pull over. It doesn't matter where you are. It's so much easier to just pull over and let that person go off and do whatever they are you know, doing. It's honestly the easiest thing to do. And even if you feel like your pride is hurt a little bit because you let someone like pass you, which is kind of a North American thing, I don't know, just pull over and let them pass. Let's talk about personalities in New Zealand. So being an outgoing, loud extrovert is not the normal here. Most people are quite reserved, stoic, and quiet, which is like me, that means that it's very, very hard for me to make friends if the general population is also like me. Likes to chill, doesn't like to chat a whole lot. If you're extroverted like my partner is, it could be a huge leg up for you in order to get the job you want because most people are non-confrontational, don't wanna bother with having difficult conversations in the workplace. So this can be a really big leg up if it's a place that you wanna to move to just long-term for moving up like the corporate ladder or even meeting friends. If you're able to talk to people and get information out of them, I think that once a Kiwi or a New Zealander opens up to you, they're like a friend for life. It's just getting past those walls that's difficult. And as an introvert, I mean, that's next to impossible for me because that's the way that I am. So. 
that is something I think that's really cool actually, is that if you're an extrovert, this could be a really great country for you to just help open people up here. Now I'm gonna talk about biker gangs. So I have talked about this before, I think quite briefly. They're known as bikies or bikey gangs, uh, which is like the most adorable name for probably one of the worst things. And I haven't actually seen that many, honestly, until we moved to Nelson and only until like the last month or two. So I don't know if something happened or whatever, but now I see them almost every day going like back and forth down the street. They really like to rev their engines up around like high school kids, I think. I don't know if that's some kind of recruiting process or something, but they're wearing their little jackets with like the emblem on the back and, um, I don't like that. I don't like feeling unsafe in my own home or my own area. And just driving around Nelson sometimes, they'll come up right behind you and just be like revving their engine so loud that like you're going to lose some hearing. Uh, it's extremely intimidating. And I have like read a little bit about biker gangs in New Zealand and why they've grown so much. And you can definitely leave me a comment down below if you know more about this. What I read was basically that Australia had kind of outlawed biker gangs like 10 years ago. So there were a lot of Kiwis that moved over there, joined biker gangs and were doing their stuff there. But once Australia did that, they all came back to New Zealand where New Zealand, it's kind of, I don't know, like the police here don't enforce a lot. That's my impression. They kind of let these biker gangs do what they want. I mean, they let them cruise around like intimidating people, like revving their engines super loudly in the middle of a work day. I don't know the ins and outs. I'm not an expert, but I do know from personal experience with the police in Nelson is that they're kind of like laissez faire. They kind of just like, oh, it's cool. Like if no one's like actively getting murdered, like it's okay which is a little concerning, honestly, um, especially because a lot of these biker gangs like to recruit younger people. If you're gonna move here and raise kids, that's not what you want them to do. So it's something to consider. I mean, obviously places like the United States, even Canada are way more dangerous, but I've never seen like actual criminals flaunting their presence in broad daylight, like, without any care in the world. I've, I've just never seen that before. Usually a lot of crime back home happens like at nighttime or in the US, I mean, I'm not even gonna touch that. I've never lived there and certain pockets are just like absolutely horrible, but it's something to consider. I just thought I'd bring it up because it makes me feel uneasy. So overall, after living here for a year, New Zealand is just an amazing place and a super chilled out place to live. If you like that kind of lifestyle, if you love the outdoors, going on hikes, biking, kayaking, being on the water, New Zealand is absolutely perfect for that kind of lifestyle because you can be outside all year round doing so many different things. I mean, not that you can't do that back in Canada, but there are certain times in the winter where it's actually unsafe. And in the summer with like extreme forest fires, it's unsafe, but. In New Zealand, you really do feel removed from the rest of the world. You're truly like in the middle of nowhere. Australia is like a three or four hour flight away and that is your closest like major country. So yes, it can be expensive if you wanna travel internationally, but if you just wanna come here and live like a modest, humble life where you're not making a ton of money and you just wanna be like at peace, I think this is such a great spot to do that. Everything depends on your perspective, where you're coming from, what country you are currently in, and how it compares to New Zealand because it can be way better than certain countries or it can be marginally better or it can be maybe a little bit worse. There are definitely certain comforts that I miss from North America, things like actual winter. I absolutely love the snow, like I love it so much. What I don't like is when it's like minus 40, for two weeks straight or it's just too cold to go outside. But snow in winter, I fully love that stuff. So I really do miss that actually. I also really miss sports. My partner and I watch a lot of sports. Hockey is the one that I miss the most, but we also watch like American football and baseball occasionally. And just with the time difference, usually they're playing like in the middle of the day 
on a Monday, sometimes a Tuesday or something like that. So of course Donovan works and is not here to watch those things. And then we have to have a VPN to like watch it here. So I really actually miss watching like nightly hockey games. That's something I'm really looking forward to returning to. There are certain food places that I really miss. Like I said, pizza is a big thing. There are pizza spots back home that I cannot wait to go back to. Pizza styles that I've just never seen here, like Chicago deep dish or Detroit style pizza. Most of it here is like the thin crust wood fired, which is fine, but I miss a lot of things like that. Just your classic like North American foods. I also miss being really close to a lot of amazing travel destinations. Being in Canada and being a few hours flight away from so many amazing cities in the United States, being like six to eight hours away from Europe and Mexico and the Caribbean, there's just so much that's a lot closer. And because of that, it's a lot cheaper to travel to some of those destinations. That's definitely something I think Canada has a leg up on New Zealand with is having more accessible international travel spots. Being here for the last year has been an absolute privilege and I am so lucky that I got to do this. This has been a dream of mine since high school, you guys. Like over 10 years, I have been wanting to do this. And New Zealand has definitely made me think a lot about the things that I value in life. And I think I will take away so many lessons from living here about what is actually valuable in life. New Zealand has definitely reinforced some of the beliefs I had about connection with other people, time with family, time with friends, time spent outdoors. That's what really matters to me. Not so much building wealth and making a ton of money. And I just love that message. And it has also made me appreciate living in Calgary, living in one of the top cities in the world that is consistently voted one of the best cities to live in the world. I am not from Calgary. I moved from Ottawa when I was like 23, 22, 23. And I basically never looked back. And you know, there are always frustrations in any place you live. There's always going to be things that get on your nerves, but moving to New Zealand and experiencing life in another country has really made me appreciate what life is like in Canada. All of the privileges that are afforded to you when you are a citizen of a country. Emigrating is a huge deal and there's a ton of work you have to do. We've met so many expats here that just had such a difficult time moving and relocating. And I understand why it is a difficult process, but moving back to a country where you're a citizen and you can work anywhere in that country, and not have to worry about visas and everything is just amazing. And like I said, Calgary is one of the best cities in the world to live in. I'm so excited to go and return there and start building a more longer term life, longer term future, and just be able to have like amazing adventures and travel destinations from that spot. And it's, it's just been the best experience looking back. You know, there's been ups and downs, of course. There's been a lot of self-reflection because I had such a positive idea on New Zealand before coming here and not everything met expectations. And it's really made me realize that life in another country is at some point, it's going to settle down and be pretty similar to your life in the country you're already in. I mean, of course that depends on where you're coming from, but Canada and New Zealand are so similar on so many points. And it totally makes sense why we're always like going back and forth, why New Zealanders are coming to Canada and doing their working holiday visa, why we come here and see something different, but that's also so familiar and so similar. So I definitely feel like a deep connection with New Zealand now. And I honestly think that we will be back hopefully in the next like five years to see the things we didn't get to see, to, try and experience it through the eyes of just being a traveler instead of living here. And of course, I'm gonna remember these memories for the rest of my life. So we still have about five weeks in New Zealand to wrap things up, to get things organized, to hopefully explore a little bit more. But I hope this video was enjoyable to you. Definitely leave me a comment down below about your thoughts on living in New Zealand or coming here or maybe things that you're concerned about. And I'll see you guys really soon in the next video. Bye.